Hey, this is Notzer, and this is the user replay of the week. We have Seeker of Power in the Tier 9 US Destroyer, Fletcher. Now, I know I choose the Fletcher a lot. I just think US Destroyers are really entertaining. They go at a breakneck speed, and that is enjoyable to watch. But first, if you have a replay, please send it to notzerreplay at gmail.com. Please have the replay file, the end score screenshots, one to two sentence summary, and have the ship name in the title of the email. It really makes it easier for me to look through the replays and find something that's really exciting to watch. If you have an insane moment, please feel free to share that as well. Just add a timestamp so I don't have to spend the entire time looking through the replay for that amazing moment. Now, if your replay wasn't selected this week, maybe next week. It has to be entertaining. That's really the most important thing for user replays. If it's a bad game where you lose, that's okay. If you lose spectacularly, that's more enjoyable than an extended long range engagement where you never risk your ship. Sort of like high tier players who refuse to engage at any range below 17 kilometers. I just can't imagine the game is enjoyable for them. So, Seeker of Power. I love that name. He is seeking some power in C. Maybe he'll run into an enemy. There are four enemy destroyers. So there is a real threat that there might be an enemy destroyer around this corner. We have no idea, but as a Fletcher, you're pretty confident. Hey, 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 whoa, Seeker, Seeker. Don't want to pull Natsu right now. Okay, that was close. As a Fletcher, you're pretty confident that no matter who you run up against, you can take him out. But apparently the enemy has no interest in C. I don't know why. The first enemy sighted is a tier 10 German cruiser in the Hindenburg. You do not want to be alone or the first ship into any scenario as a German cruiser, in my opinion. They're just not built that way. They're really built to be the plus one. They've got great damage output. They could take an all right amount of damage, but they really need someone to help them with destroyers. Destroyers can just run circles around them because of the detection. They have so much extra range to decide when to send their torpedoes. Now it looks like Seeker of Power is going to send, oh, he's got an Admiral Hipper as his plus one. That's all right, not ideal. And it looks like Seeker of Power is going to send his torpedoes towards the enemy German cruisers. And I have adjusted it to be narrow in the replay email submission. Whoa, there's a destroyer right next to him. He's gotta be careful. Okay, it's a Japanese destroyer. Yeah, he should just ace this guy. He's got first shot. Torpedoes are facing towards him. He takes out his propulsion. He continues to pelt him in the center of his ship. In his last ditch attempt to avoid dying, the enemy destroyer pops a smoke. But where did he go? He actually disappears. Oh, one torpedo, two torpedo, three torpedoes. He hit three of his torpedoes against those German cruisers. Looks like one hit the Hindenburg and two hit the Admiral Hipper. Now, where is that enemy Kagero? He hid in the smoke. He did get away. Is he going to be successful in running away from Seeker of Power? Oh, nope. No, he's back. Okay, well, you're going to die, enemy destroyer. He's trying to wiggle. Now, when you're wiggling, you want to be unpredictable. You don't want to wiggle at a set pace. For example, you don't want to wiggle at the full speed of your rudder. That gives you no leeway to adjust up or down the amount of rudder you're putting into the ship. Either way, it doesn't work out. His propulsion was knocked out. There was no way of repairing it. We know he had to use it recently, but now Seeker has to deal with torpedoes. Okay, Seeker, just narrow it up. Oh, you're good. All right. Seeker's good. He's able to take out the enemy destroyer, and he's going to capture B. It looks like his friendlies were able to follow up, probably on the Admiral Hipper. I don't see it anymore. Hindenburg is still alive. And there's an enemy Iowa. There's an enemy Wagami. But it looks like Seeker is considering attacking this Iowa. The Iowa is full health, of course. The Mogami just died. Oh, there's another Mogami. I believe that was a Megami. I think he really would prefer that Megami since it's coming towards the point. The Iowa is moving away. 
torpedoes aren't very effective when the target is out of range. I'm just telling it like it is. I know that's shocking, but it looks like the Iowa actually is turning back. Now, he knows. He has to know. I hope he knows that he's spotted. Ooh, the Mogami shows back up. I believe he set the Mogami as the primary target. And as he sends his torpedoes against the Mogami, he's probably at the indicator and leading the Mogami. Hopefully the Mogami knows this is coming or there's a threat of a torpedo if you're detected at such a close range. I can't imagine why a cruiser would not take situation awareness. I personally can't imagine not taking it on any of my ships. There are just too many islands, too many completely blind spots. And it will help you, even if your detection is awful in that scenario. The Megami did not expect this. He's going to take one, two torpedoes, maybe a third. He takes three torpedoes and is taken out. Good job, Seeker. The Megami just didn't sail correctly. You knew that there was a destroyer who killed a friendly destroyer at B and captured it. Why would you sail just so predictably around that area? He was just not paying attention. You need to take in all this information so you can make the best choice. Seeker at this point is taking in all the information and he's making the best choice. He feels like the enemy Izumo and the Yamato. Gonna push the western flank against his team. He doesn't really have that powerful of a flank here. When you consider the eastern flank has completely destroyed all enemy combatants. It's just that Iowa and these battleships. Four battleships, two destroyers are somewhere out there. Probably one right in front since there's smoke out there. His torpedo systems are almost up and he's setting an attack on the enemy Yamato. I actually try to select the correct target for him. So you can kind of see he sent one at the indicator and one behind the indicator. Maybe he believed the battleships would be turning, slowing down. That is a possibility when you see so many torpedoes in the water. It looks like a Shimakaze and probably a US destroyer have already sent torpedoes. But Seeker of Power has a great, great angle with his torpedoes and he's gonna hit a lot. He's gonna, is he gonna hit that front? He does hit the front one. Three, four, four on the Yamato. And then you're gonna get what looks like two on the Izabo. And they do cause flooding. And he's trying to follow up with fires. Yes, two on the Izumo. He earns Confederate. He has popped his smoke. And he's going to proceed to try and spread the fire. Now, the fire did not stick. We know that the Yamato has put out the fire and the flood with his damage control. But now he is susceptible to the fire. And he's got two on the Yamato. This is bad. Way overextended. Doesn't have the coverage of a cruiser or a destroyer. I'm a little surprised, well I'm not surprised, I'm a little frustrated that player base hasn't really caught on to how you're supposed to play the game in a scenario where you support your battleships. You've got to screen for them. You have to. You can't allow these US destroyers, these Japanese destroyers, to bully battleships. And that's exactly what they do with their torpedoes. So he's gotten four fires on the Yamato. It dies to just overwhelming damage. Finally, an enemy destroyer shows up, but he sent a widespread at three kilometers. Seeker just gets lucky. He avoids all of the torpedoes. They give enough room for him to not even have to move. And this gearing never even considers to use his guns or to avoid dying. He just throws his ship away. The Izumo probably going to die to a fire or friendlies trying to engage him. But Seeker of Power. He's not going to pass up the opportunity to maybe get a little bit more damage. Although, Seeker, you're getting very close to an island. And his fire is what takes out the enemy Izumo. Just one more enemy battleship. But there's probably not enough time to take it out unless there's a huge citadel from a friendly. One thing that I haven't mentioned, and I believe I saw a comment. What does the pink mean? The pink means they killed a friendly. Or they did a significant amount of team damage after they were told not to and they have to pay for it. They have a zero tolerance policy on team damage for about 20 battles. 
and then it will wear off. You return to a normal state, but you will turn pink a little bit faster than the average. Be weary around them, but please don't kill them. And it doesn't look like Seeker of Power is going to get any significant damage before the game ends. And wow, such an impressive game in the Fletcher. 12 torpedo strikes, 4 kills, Confederate high caliber, devastating strike. Over 600,000 credits earned. Just awesome. Seeker of Power did around 3,474 base XP. Yeah, he did pretty good, I'd say. Clearly carried. He was in a position to take advantage of his torpedoes, and that's really where all the damage came. Those battleships, those cruisers, they just waddled into destruction. Around 220,000 points of damage. Just amazing. He had a lot of fire damage and a lot of torpedo damage. Just a great example of exactly how to play U.S. destroyers. I don't know why that gearing sent out widespread at 3 kilometers against a target where you can't confirm exactly where they are in the smoke. You need to have your torpedo systems tight enough that they can do damage to the target. You can't afford for them to be that wide. The gap was just perfect for Seeker of Power to fit in. Overall, I love the Fletcher. I love the gearing. I love watching U.S. Destroyers. I'm sorry if you don't, but it is breakneck. It's a lot of damage. You're putting yourself in a position to die often, and he did a great job in avoiding that. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time. Entertainment is breakneck.